Now, I would imagine where a lot of you probably can um, make the educated guess as to where we're going with this. What we just did and what we should hopefully be able to do pretty comfortably is recognize that we can go from moles of one thing. And let me even move it a little bit more space here. Okay. Oops. We can go from moles of one thing to moles of a second. I'm a big fan here of this nice little flow chart. Okay. And the way that we do that is using the coefficients of the balanced equation. Okay. The coefficient of the balanced equation is how we go from moles to moles. And like I said, I bet you some of you are already recognizing saying, okay, I kind of see where he's going with this. He's saying, well, we should also know how to go from grams of one thing, let's say grams of A, to moles of A. We can go from particles of A to moles of A. And we can go from liters of A to moles of A. So we can also, whoops, go from maybe yellow moles to grams of the second thing to particles of the second thing or to liters of the second thing so here's kind of that flow chart here's where I'm saying Get in your car and know which way to drive. Get in your car and know if you're going to be turning left or right out of the driveway. So really, if I'm giving you the grams, or if you're given the grams of one, you can determine how many grams of a second thing, your products or reactants or whatever, um, on your other thing. Okay. And again, it would be a multi-step. We would be going one, two, and then three steps. So it'd be a three step type of problem. But that's really all it is. So let's say I use that example with the water. Okay. I say that we have H2 and O2 producing H2O. Okay. And I say that you have 8.25 grams of oxygen and I want to know how many liters of water that's going to be producing. So I have a certain amount of this, let's call it A, and I want to figure out how much B I'm going to produce. Well again, really all we're doing is we're going from grams of one, let me even sub, sub it a little differently here, grams of O2, we're going to solve for moles of O2, then we're going to go to moles of what we're looking for, and then we can convert to liters of what we're looking for. So we've got those three steps. I'm in York, Maine. I got to get to the front of that bridge, cross the bridge, moles, moles, and then I can drive off to Greenland. Okay? So that's the steps. That's the idea. Let's go ahead and do that. Oops, I don't know why that thing showed up. Whoops. I don't know why that's there. Okay, so here we go. Um, X line grams of O2, moles O2, 1. 32 is what it is for oxygen. Why? Because oxygen is 16 and there are two of them, so that's 32. So 8.25 divided by 32, I got 0.26 moles of O2. So I'm here now. Now I can convert. Let me grab a different color here. Hopefully the red is... Yeah, we can see the red, I think. Now I'm going to go from moles of O2 to moles of H2O, the one that I'm looking for. Where do I get these numbers? From my coefficients of the balanced equation. 2 and 1 respectively. So I still get that 0.26 on my calculator. I'm just going to multiply it by 2. I get 0 0.52 moles of H2O. Oops. 0 0.52 moles of H2O. And now I'm here. 
I can convert to liters. So x line, hopefully that blue is legible enough. Moles of H2O to liters of H2O, 1, 22.4, because that's the conversion again. Um, so times 22.4, and I get 11.55 liters of H2O. So if I was giving you 8.25 grams of oxygen, you would produce 11.55 liters of water. Okay. Please notice that only when I go moles, moles, do I use the coefficients. Notice that when I did my liters or gram conversions, I used the old standby, the number for one, because that's the unit equality for moles conversions. So that's how we convert between grams, liters, or particles of one to grams, liters, or particles of another.